G'day everyone and welcome to an old Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update. Today, the 12th of January 2016, my name's Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by our major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. It's very little happening locally, folks, and certainly nothing Cyclone related over the next week or two. So tonight's update, we're just going to have a brief look at Tropical Cyclone Ula, or what's left of Ula, and we'll also have a look at a remarkable little system up there in the north central Pacific called Hurricane Pali, or Tropical Cyclone Pali. First of its kind, the earliest ever hurricane to form since records began in the central Pacific. Truly a remarkable system. Following on from that, we'll have a look at the expected rainfall over the next week across Australia. But as I say, nothing locally cyclone-wise, so if that's what you've tuned in to find out about, uh, you may as well uh, leave now, folks, because there's absolutely nothing happening cyclone-related in the Australian region, at least for the next 10 days, possibly the next two weeks at least. Alrighty, so Ula is a shadow of its former self here. It's moving in a southeasterly direction, not going to impact anyone. So it missed New Caledonia by a long way. It missed Vanuatu Southern Islands by about 80 odd kilometres. So they did get the outer bands of, of Ula when she was a Category 4, but uh, it, she's a former a shadow of her former self here. You can only see convection here in the southeast quadrant, and even that's starting to wane now. So the system is well and truly uh, about to die. Only going to affect a few fish, folks, so we're not going to really talk about it any further. Another fish-bothering cyclone is Tropical Cyclone Pali. Now, Tropical Cyclone Pali is located just north of the equator and also just east of the Dateline. So it's right in there, smack bang in the Central Pacific. And we can see here the a very unique direction of move, movement that the system will take here is to drag, drop down here to the south and get to around about two or three degrees north. So that's, a, that's within two or three hundred kilometers of the equator. This is the equator here, that zero line. And it's really a remarkable system to a, develop where it has developed at the time it has developed, and B, to track in this direction back towards the equator. And you can even see the error margin here, the southernmost error margin, could have it shifting to the south of the equator. Could you believe that? That's two systems in the last month that have moved from equator, uh, from one hemisphere to the other. So we had one that moved from the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere, and you know what? If an outlier happens here, we could even have the remarkable situation of one moving from the northern hemisphere, spinning the wrong way in the southern hemisphere. That is truly remarkable. But anyway, look, the, the expectation is that it won't move past that equator region, but it will get quite close here as it tracks to the west. So there is a tropical cyclone parlor. You can see that nice little eye there. It does seem like it's just weakened slightly there in the last three to six hours, but uh, tracking in this southerly direction towards the equator. Another one that is going to bother the fishes, but not bother too many humans. Alrighty, looking at the expected rainfall here across Australia over the next fortnight, it does not paint a pretty picture. These uh, these rainfall totals of 20 to 50 millimetres across the tropical regions of of Queensland just simply don't cut it. That just it, it's just horrendously below average. Uh, so we're looking at a very very dry January. So this takes us out to about the 28th of January. Looking at a very dry January in comparison to normal. Look, there will be some pretty good shower and thunderstorm activity associated with the trough here across inland Queensland in week two. Uh, in week one, there's going to be a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity in the inland parts of the Kimberley, extending into the inland parts of the Pilbara and the interior of WA. And even the stuff in the in the Northern Territory here, in the western half of the Northern Territory, you're talking about 70 to 100 millimetres here in the Darwin area over two weeks. Now, you've got to, you've got to understand that Darwin averages well in excess of 350 to 450 millimetres over the month. So you're looking at probably uh, an expectation there to see 200 or so millimetres over two weeks at least in this region. And you're seeing about half that. So yes, if there's going to be rain, no doubt about that. There's going to be rain on the West Peninsula. There's even going to be rain on the North Queensland coast. Not much of it though. It's certainly not what you would expect in January. So a very dry January across most of Northern Australia. As I say, with the exception here of uh, parts of the Kimberley, and that's only some parts of the Kimberley, that's not widespread all over the Kimberley. Uh, there's places like Columbaroo that will largely miss out on most of this activity. 
and places further to the west here around Broome will largely miss out on most of the activity. The activity will remain quite east of them. Certainly a lot of the Pilbara coastal locations are expected to miss out on a lot of the activity that's in this region. So as I say folks, it's not positive news as we head towards the end of January. The one little shining light that we could probably start to look at is this uh, this area just in here around Indonesia. You can see here the rainfall total starting to get up as we get in towards late January. Remember, we always look at what's happening in Indonesia and East Timor to see what will happen in near our area a week or two later so that is the first sign of anything positive coming out of this wet season at least out of the second burst of the monsoon and we can start to see towards the very very last few days of january we see an increase in rainfall across indonesia and eventually hopefully east timor and that will then hopefully fingers crossed funnel towards northern australia Alrighty, tomorrow Queensland pretty well devoid of too much weather except for the southwest here and possibly just some uh, showers and thunderstorms across the southern border ranges. Uh, very, very isolated activity maybe on the Western Peninsula. That's a big maybe. Uh, not quite sure if we'll actually see any of that. Across the Northern Territory, we're going to see an enhanced period of weather here in the, or just to the east of Darwin. We're going to see a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity tomorrow. Uh, expecting to see widespread activity there and possibly some moderate falls developing in uh, those thunderstorm clusters. Now across the Kimberley we can see inland parts of the Kimberley the interior of WA is doing very very well here with scattered showers and thunderstorms much more isolated as we head further west towards the Pilbara and even parts of the Gascoigne, the, no the uh, northern and eastern Gascoigne looking like uh, receiving some isolated showers and thunderstorms tomorrow. As we go to Thursday, we can see this trough system creating some really good rain just here in the southern part of your screen in New South Wales. But you can see it extending all the way out here to the northwest, all the way to the North Kimberley. And you can see the uh, rainfall totals from this starting to add up here across the central parts of Australia. It's going to make for a beautiful uh, view when we start to see those desert flowers blooming in a week or two's time. In fact, there's probably a fair bit of bloom there already because they've had a fair amount of rainfall so far in the past month in this Alice Springs and further, just further to the northwest here. Uh, uh, still looking at fairly enhanced activity here around the Darwin area on Thursday, continuing, but you can see drying out big time across Queensland and eastern parts of the Northern Territory. We can also see the possibility here for some isolated showers and thunderstorms making it to the coast on the Pilbara and extending almost to the coast here in the Gascoigne region as well. So that's pretty positive news. A lot of this stuff uh, has been well inland for these regions. So this is the first sign that we could see some of that hopefully making it to the coast. Very isolated showers possible across the peninsula and northeast coast of Queensland as well. On Friday, we see a trough system extending into Queensland here. You can see the trough is now disjointed. Uh, we have the so the northern section of this trough is now moving eastwards. Uh, sorry, the southern section of this trough is now moving eastwards. The northern section remains firmly implanted in this central parts of, of Western Australia, uh, extending into western parts of the Northern Territory. So you see isolated showers and thunderstorms, very isolated showers and thunderstorms here across southwestern Queensland. Much more a scattered activity expected across the southern parts of Queensland here. Uh, and w behind that trough system, we're going to see a fairly strong ridge developing. So across Queensland, very isolated showers on the northeast coast and the far northern peninsula. And that shower and storm activity around the Darwin area starts to decrease on Friday. By Saturday, what we can see is very isolated the shower and storm activity remains here for the Northern Territory, but it is very isolated. Very definitely a case of more miss than hit. Still continuing to see excellent thunderstorm activity. Look at this. This is the beautiful sight to see here for the Pilbara, the East Pilbara and the West Kimberley particularly. We're actually going to see some of that storm activity making it to the coast. How good is that? Uh, that's certainly been something that's been lacking all season. Enough steering to pull pull those storms in towards the coast. So finally on Saturday we're starting to see really strong signs that that's going to happen, uh, which is great news for them. Across Queensland we're going to see that trough system and a ridge pushing in underneath it. So what we're going to see is showers and thunderstorms 
developing here across the central interior, possibly even the northern interior of Queensland, and showers will extend northwards. Now, if we were to go further into this on Sunday and Monday, we would see that that shower activity would extend northwards through uh, the central coast with Sundays into the Herbert Lower Burdekin and then the North Tropical Coast and Tablelands. And in behind it, folks, stability, stability, stability. Another ridge coming through uh, for Queensland, folks, and that's going to create a lot of dry air. But the good news is in the long term, in the 10 to 14 day period, we're looking at this uh, this trough redeveloping through inland parts of Australia and then extending eastwards again. So that is the extreme long term though and I don't want to talk too much about that in this update. Once again, absolutely no sign of tropical cyclone development anywhere around northern Australia in the 7 to 14 day time frame. For those of us that are subscribers, if you go to your website, cyclonechase.com.au, log in, and on the right-hand side here is the Weather Centre. It's a new initiative that we've taken to create a one-stop shop for all your uh, weather information. And this is exclusive to subscribers, and we have different levels of satellite, uh, different levels of satellite zoom uh, and satellite animation, and also radar. We've got high-resolution radar uh, up to about 30 or 40 colours depicting different shower and thunderstorm intensities. But uh, certainly, folks, this is the way that Oz Cyclone Chasers is going into the future. And we thank our subscribers for their support because through their subscription, that is the only way we can afford to do what we do. And this is our way of giving you something back. For those of you that want to become subscribers for Oz Cyclone Chasers, just head to our website at ozcyclonechasers.com.au. There it is over there. And there'll be a link here to subscribe. And you can become a subscriber and you'll have access to this weather centre. As I say, it is going to be an awesome little tool as the season progresses and we add new and innovative features to it. I'll leave you with these beautiful images of thunderstorms all across the Northern Territory. How beautiful is that to watch? Thanks for watching this one. I'll talk to you again next Tuesday.